Sorry for analysis of the DNC. We turn now to Peter Lavin, staff writer for the National Catholic Register. He is in Chicago right now. Peter, great to be with you. Um, as we just heard tonight, that Tim Waltz is going to be speaking. It's called Waltz Wednesday. Um, let's talk more about him. What are you expecting to hear from him tonight? Well, it's hard to know exactly what to expect from Waltz tonight. Uh, it, it's good to admit, even for us political watchers, that about a month ago, no one had ever heard of Tim Waltz. Uh, and today, he is becoming the vice presidential nominee of the Democratic Party. Uh, there's been a race to define Tim Waltz in the media. Um, there's been great scrutiny over his military record uh, and other aspects of his personal life that have yet to really be vetted. We know that he was a high school football coach. Uh, we know that he served in the military. And we know that he's also been a sharp critic of the pro-life community. Uh, and one of the ways that he's been criticizing the pro-life community is through uh, sharing his own personal story about his family's journey using IVF. Now, of course, uh, two days ago, we found out that that may have been something of a fib in a New York Times report that really uh, it wasn't IVF that he and his wife used, but some other kind of uh, fertility service. So it's going to be interesting to see how does he address these uh, growing uh, controversies surrounding his uh, somewhat tenuous relationship with the straight truth. Uh, and outside of that, I, Walls is still pretty much a blank slate. Yeah, and Peter, um, I also want to talk uh, about his record when it comes to issues dealing with the faithful during his time as governor of Minnesota. What can you tell us about that? So we know that Tim Walls is one of the most progressive governors in America, and this is particularly the case on issues surrounding life, on gender identity. Uh, Tim Walls, uh, we can be sure, is going to press hard on the culture war um, stuff from the, from the progressive side. Yeah, and I want to go back to abortion now, really on display there at, at the DNC. I understand that you interviewed uh, Kristen Day from Democrats for Life of America. Yes. What did she have to say about the DNC and its attitude toward pro-lifers? So I was struck talking to Kristen Day today about how dismayed she actually is with the Democratic Party. Uh, she sounded to me like somebody who is heartbroken, who's had a long relationship with an institution and doesn't really want to leave it, but is beginning to see the writing on the wall. Um, in response to the uh, Planned Parenthood abortion van controversy that's been happening here in Chicago, um, her group, Democrats for Life of America, has decided to begin a diaper drive. Uh, tonight, she's her group is going to be doing the first drop-off of diapers at a local pregnancy center. Uh, and uh, She's also had a number of conversations with uh, Democratic leaders, Democratic lawmakers, asking, is there any room in this party uh, for pro-life Democrats? And she's heard in response that there is, there has been some lip service that, yes, there might be room for you if you call yourself pro-life, but not if you vote like a pro-life person. Uh, you have to vote the same way that the Democrats do on pro-abortion policies or there is no room. And that's something that she and her group seem to be coming to grips with. Well, Peter, so much more we can talk about, but we have to leave it right there. Thank you so much for your insights and weighing in. We appreciate it. Thank you.